Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Jesus presents revision of previous days. Filmed on the 31st of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Okay. So what we'll do first is a bit of a revision. Is that all right with you? Okay. Let's uh, start doing with that. First day, first talk. What was it about? We come across to Daniel, uh, Nada, you have to be on the ball. <laughs> You've got the Sorry. mic. <laughs> Daydreams are not allowed when you're on the mic. <laughs> uh, Daniel, um, it was about how we use our time. Well, was it really about that? That was one of the main points, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So um, one of the main points was how do I use my time? And it was about change, a desire for change. Correct, desire for personal change. A personal change. So, you know, a lot of you have desired change in the world, <laughs> but thought that, you know, you're completely innocent of anything that happens in the world, right? Here we're talking about a desire for personal change. That was the first talk. All right. You know what we feel quite strongly is quite a number of you have no desire for personal change at this point. Even, even four days in, still not much desire for personal change. There's some of you who we feel have a very strong desire for personal change. But others of you are not being honest at all about the issue of whether you even have a desire to change. You want everything else to change. You want everyone else to change. But what about you changing? What about your life changing? Right? How do I use my time was one way we could remember. It was about measurement of yourself trying to be self analytical and measuring yourself, right? So that was one way. What was the next? Can you remember? If we go Marco and then over here, um, the third way would be over here. <laughs> so let's go to Marco and down to Rose. Uh, just in regards to resistance to truth and how, how uh, you use your will. So it was resistance to truth. To God's, oh, God's truth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, many of us believe we already know what the truth is, don't we? Many don't. We, many of us start with the arrogant belief we already know what love is, we already know what truth is, and we don't. And what we need to have is no resistance to God's truth about that. Yep. And what was the middle one? Can you remember? So that was Rose. Rose, being really willing to look at how I use my will. How you use your will, yes. How? So when you did that, Rose, what did you find? I'm finding, I think I've been using the Spirit's will that's the, that have been with me yeah. a lot of the time. Don't really know much about your own will at this stage. No. No. And if you are self-reflective, you can see that you've actually been primarily using your will to maintain a facade. Yes. That's, that's your primary focus of your will. And for many of you ladies, that is the primary, has been the primary focus of your will. To, to, to maintain, develop and maintain a facade with the world and with yourself. In fact, some of you ladies have got so good at it, you believe your own propaganda. That's a bit sad, isn't it? When you believe your own propaganda, it's highly unlikely you're going to change. So, so that's something that needs to be sorted. And there's quite a number of particularly the women in the audience who believe their own propaganda about, about themselves. You know, the, the, and this is something that does need to be addressed. Okay, so then Corny came up and he talked to you about what subject, can you remember? So we said, so we said well, obviously most of us, if we analyse this honestly, we don't really have a strong desire to change for a spark, so that's a problem. And then we, Corny raised the issue of what's the main reason why we don't have a strong desire to change. If we go up the back. 
I'm Rebecca. Um, fear of changing. It's fear of changing, right? So, so that was the primary, the primary theme of Corny's talk, fear of change. And he brought up that there were three, you know, remember at that talk, again, remember how he asked you for your fears and you listed off your fears and one fear after another as to all the reasons why you didn't want to change. And he says in the end, ah, yeah, but you know, you're just really fooling yourself about all that. Because the real reasons why we're afraid of change is because we don't, firstly, have, if we go, Gwen, Gwen, yep, over there. Lack of faith. We don't have faith. So, so we have a lack of faith. Faith in what? Yep, so stay there. Um, faith in God. God and? And faith in myself. And self. Big faith in myself. <laughs> yeah, Backlog. right. So we don't have a faith in God and faith in self. Of course, if you don't have faith in God, it is going to be highly unlikely you have any faith in self. Because once you have faith in God, you realise God made you. <laughs> so you could trust a lot of things that are going on inside of yourself as well. And what was the second thing he said was our main problem? If we go to Peter down the front here. Peter, uh, unwillingness to be emotionally overwhelmed. So it was all about being overwhelmed emotionally. Yeah, we, we are unwilling to go there. Big issue that, isn't it? Right? You know where most of you ladies have a trouble with that? Is being overwhelmed by fear. Where most of the guys in the audience have a problem with that is being overwhelmed by grief. Most of you ladies are okay with grief, although a lot of times it's grief associated with a facade, but you still let yourself feel it. But fear, that's it. Shut down, close down, I'm not going there, someone else, someone, a man hopefully will rescue me from it and all those kind of things. Yeah? It's a big problem, your belief that being overwhelmed emotionally is wrong. It's, and, and many of you are attracting events which demonstrate to you that the truth that you don't even believe in it. You've been taught it for four or five, six years for some, some cases but you don't personally believe in being overwhelmed emotionally. Right. Okay. okay, so what's the third reason that Corny mentioned? If we go to Anto. Anto, resistance to God's truth. Well, it was actually something with one word added to that. We go to Brenda. I'm Brenda. I'm hearing God's truth. Yeah, but it is, so it was about God's truth or resistance to it, but there's one word we have to add to it. If we come down here, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. Cheryl. Cheryl. Just, if you say it, say it into the mic, Cheryl, that would be good to say. Everyone knows. Yeah. Um, lack of faith in God's laws. Well, that comes into this area here. So this is all lack of faith in God. If you lack faith in God, you're definitely going to lack faith in God's laws. When you lack faith in God's goodness, you're basically saying, like, God's not good enough to make any decent laws. <laughs> so that's, that's why you have lack of faith there. Here we're talking about something different. So if we go back to Phoebe. Is it a resistance to feeling God's truth? Well, no, if we go back to Anto's question, he said, he said it was resistance to God's truth. Everything's right with one word added. Mm. Right? If we go to uh, for Kadira. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Kadira, emotional resistance to God's truth. Ah, yes. Yeah, emotional resistance. Yeah. You see, this is something we have to get to understand is that every single piece of resistance inside of us is emotional. Right? That's why we resist. There's an emotion we don't want to feel. Does that make sense? So it's very important. So it's an emotional resistance to God's truth. 
Many of you have this. This is why we've found it a real struggle being with most of this group already this week because you have much more emotional resistance than the previous group had. Right? So that means that, and, I'm not, and that's a collective thing, but there are individuals of you who don't have an emotional resistance, hardly any at all, to God's truth. But, but collectively, as a group, there's a deep emotional resistance. So, so this is a big problem. While you have that, you're not going to want to change. Okay. So then we got to Mary's talk with you on the first day. And what was that about? Can you remember? And can I just suggest during these, during these sessions where I'm going through some revision, many of you want to go back to your notes. And you know why you want to do that? Because you don't actually remember, do you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's one. That's a problem. If we go to Catherine, thanks. Just keep your hand up, Catherine. It's coming down. That's it. <laughs> uh, Catherine, will and will power. The so difference you, between will and will power. That was one of her main points. Yes. But what was the actual talk about? The whole talk about. Can you remember, Dennis? If we go, Dennis. And it's strengthening your will. All right. Remember that? It was about strengthening your will to, to love. Yeah. And remember that one of the, fir the first main point in that wasn't about will and willpower, actually. It was about love and, if we go down to Peter here again. Peter, uh, we've never received an education in how to love. Correct. And that's a very important point. Many of you do have an arrogant belief that you know how to love when you have never received an education. So how can that be true? It's, it's almost like you believing that you're an engineer, like an electronics engineer or something like that, and you've never had an education in electronics engineering. That's what most of us are doing. We're believing that we're really, really good with love but we've never had an education. <laughs> how can that be? It's funny how we're very illogical when it comes to love, right? We believe we know everything about it when the reality is we've had no education in it, so that means we probably don't know very much about it, right? We need to be honest about that. So the first thing is that we lack education in love. And this, she also said during that phase that actually... Education in love is the most important education you could ever receive. Right. Yep. Then we talked about will versus willpower. Right. Mary talked to you about that. And will was will was a soul-based quality. Remember, but willpower was the what was that? The desire to do something. See, it's Angela. To override our will. Yes, yeah, to override the real feeling in the soul. So let's say the real feeling in the soul is, I want to kill that person. That's the real feeling in the soul. And the, and the, and the willpower is going, don't do that, don't do that, you'll go to jail, there'll be all these other problems that will happen if you do that, right? So then you engage your willpower to not do what you want, really want to do in your heart. And, and this is a, a, we do this very frequently, and particularly when we start developing in love, we start going, oh, I know I'm not loving, I really feel like doing the wrong thing, but I'll try as hard as I can to do the right thing. And then Mary talked to you about trying versus automatic behaviour. Right. When it's really in your soul, the behaviour is automatic. When you have to try, the behaviour is not automatic. That means you're using your willpower. Right. So while, it, while a more loving thing may be to use your willpower to do something, it's not loving still because your will is still being engaged in the opposite direction. Right. And remember we've had this recurring theme now coming up where 
many of you have asked me questions and I've drawn a scale of what's unloving, what's unloving, what's more, just less unloving, less unloving, less unloving, then here where you actually love. And many of you had a lot of anger in you about this principle. You want to be told that you're more loving when actually you're just less unloving. Does that make sense? And, and I can't agree that you're loving until you are loving. And God can't agree either, by the way. God's not going to agree with that. God will celebrate every time you become less unloving. So you can celebrate that. But don't think that's the end of it. Don't think use that as an excuse to not do the loving thing. Right? So, and remember I used that extreme example of, oh, I'm not a murderer anymore. I just rape and pillage. <laughs> I'm less unloving, right? Yeah. We want to learn to become, to fo have our focus on love and, that, and becoming perfected in love. That's what, that's what progress to God is all about. As you receive God's love, God, God's love can help perfect you in love as well. And, this is, and in fact, only by receiving God's love will you ever become perfected in love. So this is what we want to aim for, perfection in love. We've got to give up these world-based beliefs that it's not possible. So many of you still believe it's not possible, right? Because of the lack of faith. You don't believe it's possible to be perfect in love, but it is. Yeah. Okay, and then Mary discussed the third thing with you when she had Corny up with her. What was that? Do you remember? And there were four aspects to it. If we go to just another one. Exercising the muscle. The will muscle. Well, she was talking about strengthening the will muscle, wasn't she? And, yep. and there were four things you had to do to strengthen your muscles. And what was that? So it was the emotional overwhelm. So, so there was overwhelming stimuli. Oh, sorry, overwhelming stimuli. Yeah, so you stimuli. needed to stimulate the muscle so that it grows. So you had to, and it had to be overwhelming stimuli. You, get, you can see we're using the term overwhelm quite frequently. Unfortunately, in some languages, there's no term for it, for being overwhelmed emotionally. Yeah. So you, in some languages, uh, when they do translation of this word, they're having to come up with a term, you know, a long series of words to describe the actual word. So we want to be overwhelmed. We've got to be overwhelmed in terms of stimuli. Repetition. Got, repetition. So we've got to repeat the action. Nourishing food. Good food. So we've got to focus on food that is good for us. And the water. So water that is also nice and clean and good for us, right? Good water. Okay. That's what you do to build a muscle. And then Mary said, right, let's put that into practice with our will. So what does that mean with our will? So what does overwhelming stimuli what are we going to do when we develop our will to love we're going to have to have some overwhelming stimuli to love we're going to have to be place ourselves in situations and circumstances where we normally would not be loving and actually choose to love instead everyone gets that and then and then when that's not successful we don't give up and we do it again and again, and again, and again. Right? So that we have to repeat that. Now, what was the good food and water analogy? Can you remember that? So if we go out the back to Gary. Uh, I think the, the food was nourishing yourself spiritually with, with information and maybe books or having, a, having an inquiry, you know, to have your soul as a project. And About what? When you say nourishing yourself spiritually, what's the subject matter? About love and... Right. So it's always about love because this is about an education in love, right? So, so instead of wasting our time on things that are not about love, we need to focus our attention on things that are loving. Focus our time on finding that. And what was the water likened to? Can you remember? If we come down to Sue. It was like the waters of truth for... Um around love yep so we're talking now about be, be, desiring truth yeah. see what we're finding in this audience is that only only a few of you desire truth 
The rest of you are quite scared of truth. You think about many of you had a deep fear before you even arrived here. That's part of your fear of truth. You're afraid to hear more. And there's all sorts of reasons. One reason is because many of you feel like, oh no, not more, sort of a feeling, right? There you have. Well, that, that's just an emotion, right? Because once you get rid of that emotion, it's like, more, you ripper. You know, that, that, it's a different feeling once you get rid of that emotion. But while you have this, oh no, not more, then of course, while that emotion is present, no other emotion about truth is going to be able to be present. So you're going to always feel, oh no, not more, until that emotion leaves you. Huh? And that's uh, w what we need to understand. So there's our first day. And many of you even struggled with the first day, to be frank. Many of you struggled with the first day. Because by the end of the first day, Myself, Mary and Cornelius were the tiredest we've ever been the entire last four weeks. That's an indication of how much effort we had to just present your first day. Okay. Second day. What do we start discussing? Second day. If we come down here to... Um, yeah, I can't remember. Is it? Uh, that's it. That's it. Um, Chris, Chris. Um, the damaged self, real self, facades. Self. Right, so it was all about understanding self. And remember I gave that introductory talk about understanding self. And remember you had so many questions and you felt quite like encouraged by that talk, didn't you? Any of you, you start to see the difference between the real self, the facade self, the hurt self. You start to understand the different emotions that are involved. We had a bit more clarity with regard to what God designed and then our responsibilities is to develop ourselves rather than relying on someone else to develop ourselves and developing even a desire to develop ourselves. Getting a desire to deconstruct the facade, to get into the hurt self and so forth, right? So understanding self, very, very important part. Now, because we spent so much time on that, we didn't get much time to do anything else that day, did we? You remember? Yep. So the next day, which was yesterday, we started introducing you to two different talks. What, what were they? They were all about the self still. So we can turn to Lani. Lani. Um, deconstructing the facade. So deconstruction the facade. Yep. And remember the de deconstruction process was going to apply to a lot of emotions. So, so it's not just to the facade, it's going to be uh, the deconstruction process applies to the hurt as well. And so that deconstruction process is a very good process to remember. It helps you to know where you are, measure where you are. And the second thing? Um, the hurt self. The hurt self. So experiencing, Mary called it, the hurt self. And she gave you a lot of tools to help you through the deconstruction process. Experiencing the Hulk self is what I was almost going to write. I don't know why that is. <laughs> okay. So Mary gave you a lot of tools there, didn't she? In, and rather than us going through those tools now, if you can re try to recall some of them, you remember that all of them, she said, were emotional in nature. And there was a, there was a big emphasis that we placed right at the end of that talk on what with the hurt? Can you remember? What did we really try to emphasize with the hurt? Thanks, Angela. Um, there was two things. Yeah. Um, the first one was um, that many of us have um, experienced the... F oh, hang on. I'm not going to do this justice, but... It's okay, have a um, step. Many of us have experienced 
the facade or the, no the tantrum the temper the tantrum tantrum the yeah. tantrum yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> um, rather than the hurt self or even rather than the facade right so she's yeah. she was saying to to you you've got to be really real with that process yeah. Yeah. and and most of us are not yeah. that real with that process yeah. we think yeah. if we're crying that it yeah. means we're experiencing yeah. the hurt yeah. when a lot of times we're actually having a big yeah. tantrum that yeah. we're not getting what we wanted yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a problem yeah. Yeah. yeah and any other thing that she if you can remember something's really really important if we come across to Carty, thanks um, Carty, uh, crying about the facade hurt. Yes, that's one thing she mentioned, but there's something more important than all of those things. If we come down to Peter, and then so down here. To love our hurt self and show, show compassion towards it. To love our hurt self, yes, that's very important. And remember, that's a part of the deconstruction process, but there was something even more important than all of those things. So if we come across to Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. The, the facade part of ourselves will be the hardest thing that we... Yeah, she said that right at the start, but... Hard to deconstruct. And also at the end, but uh, this is not what I'm looking for. Maybe if I tell you, shall we? We need to educate our hurt self in love. Why? Why do we need to educate our hurt self in love? All right, if we come across to Miranda. Excuse me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, because we were not educated in love. We don't know anything about love. Correct. And our hurt self often believes completely the opposite thing as to what God's truth is about love. All right. Of course, the facade self does as well, but it's the, a lot of it is from the hurt that we need to. So we need to help educate this process, help, help educate the hurt selves. Now, will the hurt self and the facade self remain forever? Pretty obviously not, right? In fact, the hurt self and the facade self will disappear completely, disappear fully. So that means they're not the real self, right? And your long-term future will revolve around developing your real self. That's where your long-term future is. So in amongst all of this, remember we have not covered anything about developing the real self. To be honest, we don't feel that any of you are ready for that or many of you are ready to even hear that information. So that's information we will be presenting through the FAQ channel on the YouTube just so that we can help people eventually understand how you develop your real self once you start connecting to it. At this stage, you've got to focus your attention on the hurt self and the facade self. Yeah. Now, there's so much noise going on out there. Can you just have a look at what it's all about? Sorry? Oh, it might be bin day, isn't it? Hopefully it will be over soon. <laughs> All oh, right, yeah, okay, no worries. So that brings us to today. Day four, isn't it? Now, by day four last week, we were actually discussing a completely different subject. Day three last week, we discussed the, uh, what we're going to discuss with you today, which is addictions. That's going to be the focus of our attention today. There'll be three talks given to you today. The first talk will be a short talk that Mary is going to do. She's going to introduce you to the concept of addictions and how they operate, which is going to be about half an hour long, maybe a bit longer. And then Cornelius is going to discuss with you how you go about recognising the feelings of addictions in relationships. Does that make sense? And that will be quite a long talk, so it'll be an hour to an hour and a half. And then Mary will come back and she will talk to you about how you challenge your addictions. What do you need to do to actually start to work on them if you, re if you really want to work on them? 
Now, one thing I'd like to say about the day. It is a very important day for you today because the majority of you are heavily in addiction in a lot of areas of your life still. This is one reason for stagnation. In fact, it's one of the primary reasons why people are stagnant because they remain in their addictions. So it's a very important information day for you today about love, how to grow in love. So my suggestion is, if you have not yet engaged the process of engaging the people who are speaking, then my suggestion is you start doing that. Put away these fears that you have, which, are act which you've been addicted to the last three days, by the way, by not engaging, and really let yourself engage and be yourself. Because in that process you will learn a lot of things today if you allow that process to, to continue. So what we'll do is we'll focus on that and we may get to some personal truth sessions after that but I think probably not because we feel that the information is really important for all of you to, to listen to and we really would like to you know, get that information happening. Now, I think Mary's got one or two things she'd like to mention. Is that right or not? No? You're going to get straight on? No worries. Lani, would you like to ask a question? Lani, um, just with the facade, that talk yesterday, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned how every unloving thought we have uh, is a sin. Yes, so we introduced you to the concept of sin. Yes. yes. And I was watching myself last night and I was wondering if every unloving thought I have is that linked to the facade? Not necessarily. Many of your unloving thoughts come from your hurt self. Mm. Many of your unloving thoughts come from your facade. Okay, so as soon as I catch myself having an unloving thought, I look for where it's coming from. It's got to come from an emotion. Yeah. So you, that's where you start. You go, okay, an emotion exists inside of me that allows this unloving thought. We've got to recognise the unloving thought as a sin. So, you know, yeah. you, you look at somebody, you look, you look at Mary and go, why has she got another pretty dress on today? And there's a feeling of jealousy that comes up, right? Or, or whatever it is that you feel. So what you do is you go, okay, that, that was pretty unloving. I can feel that unloving emotion, which is a projection also at Mary, isn't it? So mm -hmm. Like that she doesn't deserve. But she's got lovely dresses because I love her in lovely dresses and she loves lovely dresses and... and because we spend very little of our money, but the money we do spend, we actually buy a T-shirt and a dress. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, so, you know, there's a lot of reasons why it's happened, but, but you're already feeling something unloving as a result. So what you do is you notice that, well, that's a sin to project that at somebody, to have that judgment of somebody. Yeah. You've got to now intellectually, in the deconstruction process, work through why, why it is. Yeah. Why is judgment such a harsh emotion? Why is judgment such a sin? In the first century, I said, if you judge, you'd actually be better off tying a, a big rock around your neck and throwing the rock into the sea, yeah. along with you with it, right? Yeah. You'd be better off doing that because that's what you're doing to your soul when you judge. You're actually yeah. darkening your soul so rapidly, you're going to be sinking through the hills as you do that. Right? That's how serious judgment is. Why is it that serious is the question. So you intellectually try to find out why, you intellectually become aware of what God's truth is about, the damage that it does, but then you've still got an emotional process to do. So, so you want to start feeling the feeling that arises that causes the judgment. Does that make sense? It does. So that's all part of that deconstruction process. Because um, I've been, you know, in the past involved in like meditation groups and that, they're all trying, you know, get past that little voice. And yeah. The little voice will remain while the emotion remains. So that little voice telling you to judge other people will remain. And all the facade, like, you know, all zenning out, trying to zone away from it and all those kind of things, all that does is create more facade. That's all it does. So they end up, like, so most people I've met in New Age movements have such a huge facade, they, know, they, be, they believe their own propaganda now that they've actually healed themselves when they've still got all of the same emotions in them that you can feel quite strongly most of the time. And all you need to do is say one little bit of truth about it and bang! The rage and anger is present, there, there's the indication. Thank you so much, because yeah. I've been just, you know, really 
just didn't know what to do with this little voice. Yeah. And it yeah. just makes so much sense. You just got to observe it, see it as unloving, don't judge it, go into the discovery of what is its cause. Once you release the emotional cause, remember that's when you have the chance to receive God's truth on anything. Only then. So most of us think we've received God's truth on subjects, but we haven't. We've only thought it. We've still not actually felt God's truth. When you feel God's truth, your whole life changes. Whole life changes. And there's some of you that have experienced that. Thank you. Good day. Well, with no further ado, we shall introduce my girl and she will, int she will introduce you to the topic of addictions. <laughs>